So the markets had a little reversal on Friday, something I did expect to happen given the, the extended move across all asset classes. So looking at the, uh, the markets, S&P, it was at resistance. It already was. It just went a little higher than yesterday's, Thursday's high. But basically just started to go lower from there. So resistance remains resistance. It closed pretty much where it opened, so unchanged. You can see why I think we're at resistance. I've had this line for a while. Even if you keep going further and extending it, you know, it was also resistance here. But more importantly is the last candle here. So for me, it makes sense. And, you know, we're also at a good round number, 450. At the moment, it seems to be lots of round numbers across all these different asset classes. The next level up is 460, you know, give or take a few cents. So it's pretty simple at this point. So 450 is resistance. Where do we go now? Honestly, I think we're going to have to venture lower. You know, it still would be bullish even if we do. So retest 445. For me, that's the, the resistance, actually. The first resist, uh, sorry, support at this point. So prior resistance. Let's just draw this in to be extra uh, zoomed in about it. But yeah, S&P, I think it's going to go lower next week. 444-ish. You see where I think it is, you know. So, and on the way up... Well, I just said, you know, 10 unit increments, so 460. I don't think we're going to get there, at least on Monday. So I'm not, well, let's see if we even break 450, right? You have to close above 450 first. So 450, 460 on the way up. And on the way down, it'll be this sort of 444 zone. A bit of a gap here too. So if it does get there, it might just go a little lower, at which, which point it'll probably bounce off this ascending, by the way. So around about this little area, just below 444. NASDAQ. Now, I said NASDAQ doesn't really have any resistance, any obvious resistance where it is. You can see this candle over here. There's no, it's just a daily candle. Um, then I said it would probably find resistance when the S&P does. And it looks like that's exactly what happened. It also closed completely unchanged. It's a reversal candle here. So I think this, just like the S&P, will go back down. Visit breakout around 373, whatever that is. Doesn't matter. Uh, and maybe we add the ascending. And again, there's a little gap here. So if we do overshoot, I expect the gap to coincide with the ascending. So, you know, I expect next week for us to go down. Maybe not Monday, be there already, but Monday, Tuesday, probably visit this area. At which point it will still be bullish. You know, I'm not bullish the markets, but technically short term, it would not be bearish anyway. So, yeah, I expect us to go down, test this resistance, three seven, sorry, support, 372. And if we overshoot, then this little 368.5 zone gap fill. Dow Jones, which was actually quite weak compared to all the other markets. I mean, this move up was not that impressive compared to the others. Even for the last couple of months, it's been one of the weakest ones along with the Russell. Uh, okay, it was the only green one. It wasn't green by much. And again, resistance. This line here is just really formidable resistance. Uh, it's just never closed above it. And to be honest with what I expect to happen next week with the S&P and the NASDAQ, I don't expect the Dow Jones to, to stand out and, and, you know, do the opposite and go up. So I reckon the, the Dow Jones will just go down, you know, like the others. Where will it go? Honestly, there's no real support on the way down. As soon as we lose this sort of zone here, you know, 34,300, we just, the next support really is the, the support from back here. So let's just say 33,700. I think we would bounce before we get there because the other markets will bounce before the Dow Jones gets there. But again, the Dow Jones is one of the weakest ones. So if we do start to see all of a sudden some bearish big moves down, the Dow Jones will, you know, a close below this area, for example, 33,000, let's say, of oh, 600. Uh, okay, we have the ascending support, but Dow Jones is one of the first markets to look very bearish very quickly. So, but... Yeah, we've got a long way down to go still, so there's plenty of time to prepare. But yeah, Dow Jones, key takeaway, it was green, but it's still weak. And I think the S&P and the NASDAQ will, will take it back down to basically the lows. The Russell, it's been one of the, in the most immediate near term, it was one of the strongest ones. You know, it actually had a bit of a late breakout here. But now, because it was actually down by 1%, unlike everything else, it seems to have returned to its... Uh, prior weakness you can see here it filled the gap it did rally off its low so it didn't close at low of day look at that gap feel very nice but again i expect the s&p and the nasdaq to go low and the the russell probably to go back down to let's say 188 and you know it wouldn't be bearish but um i think it'll have a bit of a red week next week put it that way 
So this this breakout was late, and you know I said it, it could have a late breakout, but you know the S and P and the Nasdaq they're exhausted, they're exhausted. They've had a crazy run, and it's just the wrong time for the for the Russell. It's just a bit too late. So we could go lower, but I don't see us going all the way back down to one eighty, not straight away. So let's see. I do expect Monday to be red and probably get to one eight eight. Uh, and then we'll see the banking stocks, which typically affect the Russell. And they did again. Let's start with XLF, the seniors. Let's get rid of my old. I thought I got rid of all of them. Yeah, see this one here, the XLF. I thought that we would find resistance at 35, which was a nice round number. It's also where we started to break down here. And it's also just before this descending. And we're at 34.7. It's the same thing. You know, it's the same thing. 34.7 and 35, what's that? No one cares. It opened at a high of day and just went down. Very bearish engulfing candles, one of the worst looking candles. Um, so, and that's the senior banks. So I think we're done with the, the move up. That could really affect the Russell too. It could sort of put a, a bit of a lid on any move up. So it looks like it's a bearish Friday. You know, it's not the craziest move. The S&P and the Nasdaq were, were unchanged, but it just suggests that the banks are done going up and, uh, you know, the bank, especially the KBE, the KRE, the more regional small banks, they really affect the Russell. So I think the Russell's, you know, unable to make new highs, let's say at least next week. But yeah, where do we go? We go to, I don't know if this is really breakout anymore because we seem to consolidate here. So maybe breakout is really this zone. But I am actually going to delete this line and instead place this one here. I just feel like the ascending may come into play more because the horizontal's kind of gone a little bit because of all this disturbance here. Yeah, I think we're going to go lower next week. Uh, XLF, let's see, 33.5-ish, something like that. If we go lower... Well, it's hard to tell exactly when we get support. Maybe round numbers 33 here. And then obviously 32.5. And if we go below that, I don't think we'll get there next week. But I'm very, very quick to just be very bearish on the banks. I think, uh, and remember, interest rates are going up, right? The rates went up again on Friday. That definitely didn't help the banks, which didn't help the Russell. Could be the reason for Russell being the weakest one. But yeah, I think we've just made a bit of a top hit on the XLF. It was a late rally. Everything else rallied and it, it timed almost perfect with resistance. So I'm not sure exactly where we would find support and I don't really care, you know? So um, let's see what happens. The KBE, look at this, look at this. It tried to finally break out too late. Everything else was exhausted. The, K, the XLF found resistance. So we just have instead this massive bearish engulfing trap at breakout candle. You know what? The XLF, it'll be easier to judge based on the, the, the regional KBE and KRE. We'll just go lower. And actually, I think we will visit almost 35 next week. I really think that prior support will come into play. And maybe that is when the XLF gets a bit of uh, support and it could end up coinciding with some technicals perfectly, which will become more obvious then. Uh, but the KBE I see is going down. I'm not even going to cover the moves up. You can see them already. I've got the horizontal lines in case, but I didn't believe in them. I just put them in place just in case. But look at that. I failed at breakout. I love that. KRE, same thing. KRE was weaker than the KBE, so it doesn't surprise me that it failed just before breakout the horizontal. Where do we go? 40. Nice round number, not too far away, and looks looks imminent, just like the, the KBE going back down to 35. So I think KBE 35, KRE 40 next week, and the XLF will just adapt. Uh, and, the, and so will the Russell. So... Uh, yeah, I think we have a bit of a red week ahead for the markets and the banks. Let's look at the interest rates, which had a bit of a bounce day. And I said the one year, you know, it could just break this ascending, but it won't matter. The one year is special. And look at that, we rallied. Now, normally on, on chart patterns, when you rally and touch the ascending after breaching, it becomes resistance. And then you could expect to go back down. The one year is special. It, it's almost worth removing the lines sometimes, but it could just uh, generally the lines help. So... I interest rates, not sure. I don't think they can rally all the way back up because they came down across the board because of say CPI. So I do expect, uh, I don't expect it to go all the way back up to new highs straight away. Maybe in one month's time, you have new data release and, you know, we go back up to new highs based on some, I don't know, um, higher inflation or wh whatever it might be. But 
for now it's just a bit of a bounce now the one year special so i'm going to skip it but look at the two year look at this perfect bounce on support i did say that the yield had come down a bit too much and we can expect the bounce some of the yields may go down a little lower and then get a bounce but the two year was pretty for me it was pretty much at a support zone very nice bounce that's quite a big move for the two year to be honest uh, I don't expect too much. I, I kind of expect some sideways action, maybe even a retest before going back up. Uh, and again, up, it'll be hard to break this high because of the CPI data. I think we need almost a few, quite a few days, maybe a few weeks to break out to new highs, um, which will coincide with some new data release, which may excuse a breakout. For now, we've got the excuse of a breakdown in yields because the CPI. So I just expect a bit of grind sideways, but it had to bounce. This was too much of a move down after consecutive red days. Look at the five year, beautiful bounce off this level here. For me, that was the low and it bounced perfectly. So the two year and the five year, perfect bounce, perfect bounce actually. And again, we could go a little higher, but I feel like we're going to retest maybe a higher low double bottom. But you know, when you zoom out, what does it mean? It's just sideways action before going up again. That's what I really I'm trying to convey. 10 year bounces because the others bounced. It doesn't have to go all the way back down to its low. Yeah, same thing sideways. It could even go lower and make new lows before bouncing again. So for me, it's interest rates. It's it's a bounce day. It's notable stuff. It affects the other markets. But overall, I do expect some sideways action. 30 year also sideways before maybe retesting. So sideways up day, very nice. I'm not going to look at the other yields. It's just the same sort of thing. It's not really a crazy day for, for the bond market. So yields sideways up, nice bounce, but I still think we're going to grind sideways in the grand scheme of things. The dollar, just like I said with yields, came down, look at this, so bearish, closed below 101, closed below 100.8 also. It wasn't just uh, below 101, but still at support. It was below you know, the lows down here. So really bearish stuff. Then had another flush out day. I did expect us to go sideways up. I actually expected us to close above 100. To be honest, when you're closing at 99.96, it's the same thing as 100. We even touched 100, maybe even a bit higher. So I'm pretty happy about that call. What do I think is going to happen? I think we're going to go up and we're going to retest prior support and it will act as resistance. We may even pierce it a little bit, touch 101, People get really, you know, excited. Oh, it was a flush out. I don't think it was. I think we go lower. Honestly, if we do actually go even higher, I'll pop this in just because I'm looking at it now. Let's not forget that this also will be resistance if we even get there. And if it takes several days to get there, even if it goes higher, you've got this resistance here. But then it would start to look a bit bullish. So maybe buy the dip candidate. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll go up a little bit. We'll kiss this 101 and then we go back down again as people realize that with, you know, the dollar, it's it's time to be bearish again long term. So maybe it's time to go see 95. So why buy it at 101 if you think it's going to go to 95, you know? So I think, um, yeah, I thought we might have a bit of a green sideways day. And next week, I think we may go up a little bit more. I don't know if it'll be straight away on Monday, probably on Monday, actually, to continue. Um kiss 101 and then go back down and then we'll see so and just as the dollar will go up i think markets will go down a bit actually uh rates not as obvious maybe maybe just sideways maybe it doesn't even matter actually sometimes some sectors can move um you know in, in a different direction to to the way they normally move and, and and affect other sectors differently i just think the dollar will continue to rise yields will go sort of sideways ish and markets will go down but uh, yeah, nice to see the the dollar at least put one green candle. You know, you want to see some healthy bounces and then a sell off. That's a healthy move down, rather than just down, 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 and then you know it it almost doesn't make sense. Okay, let's look at commodities. Copper finally starting to make more sense too. This this chart it was for me the hardest chart to read a few months ago, but now it's becoming a bit more obvious. Look at this resistance. We touched it. I did say I think commodities will, will go a bit sideways because I expected the, the dollar to go sideways up. I just didn't expect the dollar to be red on Friday and, and it wasn't. So copper is acting perfectly, um, basically unchanged. You know, it's finding resistance here. I think it's pretty strong and it probably wants to break out and it definitely deserves to break out. So I don't think there'll be too much <clears throat> selling pressure in copper. And uh, I think the same for gold and silver. I'll get to that in a second. 
So yeah, you know, you've got resistance here at 3.95-ish, just under four. So what do I expect? I expect some sideways, maybe even a bit of a red day on Monday and Tuesday if the dollar does decide to go up to 101. And then as soon as the dollar is failing at 101 and it starts to curl, ready to go back down, you may see the opposite in copper curl, ready to take out 3.95 and squeeze above four. A very small squeeze, of course, but, you know, a close above 3.95 is probably all you need to go to 4.20-ish in the in the medium term, if I can say that. So copper, very nice, just sideways at the highs, bullish stuff and makes sense with what the dollar's doing. Natural gas, this one's funny. I was saying, you know, it should not close above 2.5, sorry, below 2.5. And I said it might just go to 2.5 flush and then reverse, which is actually what it did on Friday. So it just went to 2.5 flush. There's probably one or two people who, who stopped out. I understand why they put their stop there, but... You know, you've got to be a bit tougher than that. You've got to have some sort of a thesis that you're you're happy to buy the low rather than stop out at the low, just under the low. That's a rookie mistake putting stops in sometimes. I, I don't do stops anymore. I use mental stops. Um, I should really do some lessons on that. Um, but anyway, you know, this is good. I like this kind of a candle, even though it was unchanged red. I feel like we will, and again, in natural gas is independent of the markets, the dollar interest rates, in my opinion. I think we're going to go back up again. I think we've got a little tiny resistance just at the high of this candle because it coincides with the descending. So 2.64-ish, something like that. Maybe 2.64-ish. Yeah, so I would like to see a candle there. And then the next day, a candle, another green candle where we close above 2.64, probably around 2.7. And then we can, you know, in three, four candles from now, we could be back at 2.9. It's hard to imagine right now, but I can just imagine a nice green candle, another one, and then a massive one. Uh, it could take longer than that, but I just like this candle here. It's kind of what you need, a, a flush out. It's not the most violent flush out, but still, um, yeah, I just wasn't liking this candle here on Thursday. You know, it looked like we were destined for a, a close below 2.5, but I like it. It's kind of reversal doji stuff. So even though it was an unchanged, even red day, I'm quite happy with that on natural gas. Again, I think we should be squeezing and, and going to, to three, four, and maybe even five oil yeah so we've gone up a bit too much i thought the dollar would be green and i think we need a reversal so makes sense and i think i said it i should have said it we should be visiting breakouts 74 we could even go a little lower visit these little candles because we've also got levels just below so even 73 i don't think we'll get to 72 but i'm you know just 74 73 that sort of area curl and then back up a few days later so for me oil makes sense it's a healthy retracement and you know 75 is better than than 67 a few days ago so very nice stuff it's just it was going up a bit too much staircase so a healthy retracement with the dollar no longer going down so let's see dollar i think will still go up on monday tuesday probably fail so that should coincide with a retest of 74 ish maybe even a little below um, before we curl and go back up and basically see an eight handle on it 80 handle on it i think we will get to 80 slash 82 so that looks absolutely fine uranium big red candle that's i mean look we've bounced very strong we have one two three four five massive candles so i understand the retracement pretty violent retracement there three percent is quite a big move but still bullish i think we just go sideways maybe a bit lower i don't know how much uranium is sensitive to the market so because i do expect the markets go down next week um and uranium sometimes just goes down with the markets but the markets are not they might not go down too violently so i don't know how much it really will affect uranium but anyway i think you know uranium is in a bullish mode it's broken out of this descending let's not forget that it just dipped a bit too much down back down into this triangle but that was because of a market flush on that Thursday. Um, but, you know, we bounced very, very hard, very quickly. We revisited resistance, right? For me, resistance is this area. I had to count the horizontal line already there, 22.5. We visited 22.5. <laughs> so we hit that reversal. So, yeah, just sideways down before going back up and then basically visiting 24. So for me, uranium still looks fine. What you don't want to see is it to keep going down and then, visiting the 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 20 again you know especially below 20.3 that would be that would be bearish for me 
because uh, it means we retrace the whole bounce and we're lower there. And it basically means visiting the absolute low, which would coincide with the low of this triangle. So, you know, it, it it's okay. It's still bullish, but another, yeah, six, six and a half percent down move and then you're, you're in trouble. But that's quite a big move away. So, yeah, lightly bullish, let's say, uranium. But I'm not in it, so I actually hope I'm wrong and it goes down. <laughs> okay, gold and silver. So gold, just like copper, absolutely fine. And let's just zoom in a bit. Um, Let's just change this a little bit. Yeah, you know, nice breakout, clean stuff, made sense with the dollar flushing. The silver a lot stronger and green again, by the way, we'll get to that. But, you know, for me, this is sideways bull flagging stuff. Makes sense with the dollar going up for once. So if the dollar does visit 101 and goes up a bit more, we could have a bit more of a retracement. But I still expect some dip buying. You know, I don't expect a, a candle to go all the way back down to 1940 and we close there. Uh, we could visit, let's say, we could visit the 40s. We could be in at 1946 at some, you know, we could have 1946 as the price at some point and the candle at that moment will look pretty bad. But then you rally and you close at 1951, 52, and then the, the, the candle looks really bullish, you know, like a hammer reversal ready to squeeze at 70. So I don't discount the possibility that we flush 1950 as we as the dollar visits 101, as it kisses 101 on the way up to go back down again. But then when the dollar starts to go back down again, I expect gold to go up and the candle to start looking good. And basically gold looking ready to actually go, like I just said, you know, visit 1970 and maybe even 80 a few days later. So I think we're just sort of flagging here, but I'm I'm watching the dollar very closely and I realized that we could dip a little bit more in gold. So but otherwise, on the downside, 1940 or 1935 to 40, very strong buying, I would recommend. Um, but otherwise, a hold and ready to, to see it move higher. Silver, didn't even see any red, despite the dollar for once being green. So that's surprising. The silver is really outperformed. I mean, these are really strong candles. Even here, as it was grinding, you know, higher highs, or maybe at least higher lows, you know, it was basing stronger than gold. And then here it was ready to break out, but everyone said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know, gold hasn't confirmed it. CPI is coming out. Wait for the dollar to, to close bearish. And then bam, everything happened. And look at these massive candle moves. It was like four and a half percent. And then continued the next day. You know, we're way above this consolidation zone here, you know, which for gold is like 1970, 80. You know, it's like it's like basically gold being at 2000 right now. That's what silver's doing. And then it had another green day, even though the dollar had a green day. So, you know, maybe you'll have a little, you should have a bit of a, I mean, I almost want a bit of a red day because, because then you can tell when it stopped going down and it will be easier to buy on a red day. I mean, I don't, I'm not a fan of buying on green days and, and chasing. Uh, and I do feel like adding a little bit to some miners, especially some senior ones in case I get it wrong. Um, I can buy some more juniors, some silver no, not juniors, mediums, right? Like the sort of Fortuna Silver, um, Alex, well, Heckler, I might start a position in Heckler, I was thinking about it, but or EXK, e EXK, First Majestic, you know, good silver stocks that are destroyed uh, on a red day, I wouldn't mind buying some of those. It's just, I don't want to be buying with silver all the way up here. So if we do have a bit of a red day with the dollar going up, with gold dipping, you know, 1945, 1946, we could see silver go down to 24. I would like that. And then again, as the dollar starts to dip, then I'd start to expect to see some nice tails come in and silver to rise. And I'd like to see that like a nice close, you know, a nice close far from the low of day. So, but at the moment, silver is super strong. And if we see the dollar dip straight away before visiting 101, silver should just go to 25.5 and you know eventually 26 very very strong stuff but you know i don't like to see that just a meteoric move up it's nice because you're making money but it's almost like you're scared for a flush um but in the grand scheme of things let's zoom out silver has a lot of catching up to do with gold right i mean silver is totally outperforming gold right now but look where gold is gold is ready to to reach a 2000 2100 even and silver 
And that's what you need to see, that $50. Sometimes you have to remind yourself, I rarely ever look at it, but this thing has a lot of catching up to. We should be way above 30. So I don't want to be too greedy waiting for a pullback either, you know, just to get my little mining stock 4% lower. And then what if it never happens? And then uh, and then it starts to go up 200%. And then I never add it to my position. So you've got to have a thesis. You've got to have a certain amount of sidelines, certain amount you're willing to allocate to each stock. Certain stocks are, are riskier than others. So, you know, I, I separate my, my portfolio a certain way. I'm going to make another video straight after this to go into my portfolio. Maybe I can discuss the way I allocate certain holdings. But anyway, back to silver. Very, very strong. I do expect the dollar to go up. I do expect a bit of a drop, but silver so far just refuses to have a red day. If it does, I do think there'll be some strong buying around 24. You can see here where I've added some lines, 24, 24.2. Um, I do think we would, if we do start to dip below Friday's low of day, I don't expect us just to go here, 24.5, and that's it. I do expect us to go a little low. So 24 to 24.2, that should be your first zone of support. If we flush more, to be honest, something's probably going on because I don't expect silver to give up so much that there would be a lot of support back here. This is the launch pad. It also would coincide because, you know, imagine how many days it would take to visit this area. It would probably take five, six, seven, eight, nine days. So if that's happening, you'd also be coinciding with the descending. So massive support at 23. I don't think we'll get there. I think we get to 24, 24.2-ish zone if we even get there. So silver, very, very strong on the way up. Like I said, 25.5, 26. After that, it's kind of blue skies until uh, it's 27, 28, and then 30. Um, yeah, 30. That, by then, it's just all rocket ships. So, uh, But sell the, sell the resistance on the breakouts, definitely. Okay, the miners... Very nice, following more gold and silver, but still outperforming gold. You know, for me, gold, this is the sort of gold at 1970 to 1980 zone, right? It's sort of there. So you're just a little higher than gold at the moment with the GDXs, GDXJ, same, absolute same chart. It's not following silver because if it was, it'd be even higher. But look, you know, beautiful technical stuff. Resistance here at 32 point, well, let's say between 32 and 32 point, five you know what i mean this line basically a uh, bit of a bearish candle though look at that close near low of day so if we do have a bit of a drop if the dollar goes up next week and goes to visit its old support which should act as resistance you can expect the gdx and the gdxj to go a bit lower you know with gold also maybe in the 1945 zone for a couple of minutes um and it's hard to tell where support will come in. I mean, I could say these peaks over here, so 31.6-ish or something, but you just have to look intraday. You probably have to watch gold, gold and silver intraday and the dollar. And when they start to hit their support resistance, then the miners will. And I don't know how much the miners will pay attention to the markets. Maybe they move in the opposite direction. So you'd have to watch several charts. You have to watch the markets. You know, for example, the S&P, keep it simple. I'd be watching the S&P, the dollar, gold, maybe silver, but then the minus chart. So three or four, four or five charts, and then you're good. Uh, and less is better. So I would really say S&P, dollar, gold, GDX. And then if you're trying to buy a particular mine, then obviously have that chart. And But you know what? You don't even need to watch your particular mine. You could just uh, watch the numbers and just buy when the charts say so. But for me, we hit resistance perfectly. Support is 31. I'd say it's just above prior basing of 30.8. So 31 is a nice number if we even get there. So I would say 31 for GDX. On the way up, you can see why I have this, this line here. It's the base, it's the support. Well, it's the resistance over here, but it's also the support here and also where we broke down. So I would say 30, let's say 33. Keep it simple, round numbers. GDXJ, exact same chart. Although on the way up, we have one less uh, horizontal line, but whatever, watch the GDX if you really think it's going to play a role. On the way down, 37, just above the breakout. Also, we have this candle here, which coincides perfectly. So 37 for GDXJ should be support. I don't think we're going to get there, even if we see the dollar go for 101. Otherwise, on the way up, 
Uh, I think Monday will still be a bit of a red sideways day, just sideways, basing, flagging, bullish flagging over here, just like GDX. I expect a bunch of candles, like intraday, we could see some lows, but the close will be around here, you know, around 32, and then bam, another move higher. That's what I expect. You know, just candles sort of closing here near 38.5-ish for GDXJ, and then boom, we go up. We're looking for 40, a close above 40. Now we're going to 42. So I'm bullish the miners right now. I like this move. Um, that'll do. I don't think I want to cover Bitcoin. Bitcoin just had a bearish reaction to the SEC the next day. It was pretty bearish. The crypto miners got slightly whacked. And I felt like the crypto miners were indicative of the crypto um, price, what to expect. And it was some, you know, some serious selling. It was almost like a almost bearish engulfing so right now it's the weekend you tend to see lighter volumes because they like to trade with the markets more for direction but that was a pretty that was like a head fake almost a breakout so i don't know if you have one of these you could put that and i'll leave that in just for good looks but i just uh it's gonna be hard to go back up there you know a close above thirty two thousand was what you really need but i also see other resistance so you could say we're there already you know, we're already at resistance. And so far, resistance has done its job. So maybe we need to go lower. Uh, I'm not sure about Bitcoin. I'm definitely less bullish now. And I think the crypto miners have lost their their bullish pattern. I'll probably cover that in my portfolio um, a video because then I can go into some specific crypto miners. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope that made sense. I expect the markets to go down next week. I expect the dollar to rally initially. I don't think it's going to rally for five days. I think the dollar will get to 101. We'll see what happens when it gets there. It should start to level off. Interest rates sideways, probably go up a little bit and then down a little bit. So just sideways. Uh, commodities sideways, then up. Sideways because of the dollar going up initially and then up because I think the dollar will, the dollar will then go down after visiting 101. And that's it. More beautiful stuff. Commodities up, markets down, dollar down rate sideways crypto don't know sideways then down maybe if i have to take a guess all right hope that was uh, useful good luck